All right, so we're starting yet another build, even though I'm in the process of my personal build, but that's okay. And that might probably sounds really bad that far away, but we're just doing a bit of a vlog. This right here is a Node 202 build. This belongs to uh, Phil's friend, and we are going to be doing some case modding to this, because why the heck not? He is a huge Destiny 2 fan, so we're kind of going with sort of a Destiny 2 theme here, while also upgrading some of his parts without him really knowing, because that's what we like to do around here. So what do you say we go ahead and start tearing it down? Corsair is proud to present their new Hydro X line of custom water cooling products. The new XG5 series radiators offer the perfect balance of fin density and airflow to keep your loop cool and quiet. The XG7 water blocks feature full coverage cooling for your GPU while also maintaining an aesthetically pleasing design, while the XC7 and XC9 CPU blocks keep all your modern CPUs nice and cool. To see the complete lineup of Hydro X cooling products from Corsair, click the link in the description below. So one of the major issues with the Node 202 is the fact that there's not really room for an AIO or anything like that. And you can see he's got this small cryo rig cooler keeping a 6700K coolish, to put it mildly. So we're gonna be doing an external radiator on this. I, we asked him like, hey, are you cool with Jay like putting external rads and stuff on this? He was like, yeah, I don't care. So here's what we're thinking. Um, this is a Corsair H100i. I'm not doing a full custom loop or anything on this. There's, really not any room for it, to be honest. And I don't want to mount all kinds of things. We still want some portability for him because he does like to take it to friends' houses and do little lands and stuff. What I'm kind of thinking is that we'll have an, the externally mounted RAM. RAM? Rad. That's a really big stick of RAM. The idea here is that this is sort of a weathered spacecraft, if you will. What we have to do right now, though, is we've got to tear this down. Because I think as far as we're going to get today, and I sure hope that he backed everything up because you never know what happens when you start taking these things apart. The only thing we're going to probably get done today is some of the painting, but this is this is more about case modding. What? What are those? <laughs> are they even matched? They're not the same shade of green. <laughs> those have got to go. Look at that. There's like no chips anywhere except for there. This could have been so dim memory. So as you can see, um, yeah, this, this stuff is definitely worthy of an upgrade. We're gonna be keeping these parts though because they could be a perfect use for someone else maybe that doesn't have a computer like all. And Phil is on a mission to get all of his friends with computers to start play, playing during the, in the PC master race. Phil's on a mission, so I'll help him with that. Uh, uh, uh. All done. <laughs> So I found my taxes. <laughs> this is how it goes. Like that. So we literally are gonna have the hottest part, which is the GPU. We're gonna have fans here pushing air in, just right into the GPU. The GPU fans are right there. So this is gonna be forcing, like GPU fans face that way. So this will be forcing air right onto the GPU fans. And then, the back side of the GPU is exposed to this cover. So what we're gonna do now, is this is gonna be opening here with the radiator cooling heat out. But Jay, it's gonna pull hot air from the GPU. It's gonna pull some pretty fresh air, to be honest. From here, from there to there, it's not gonna be too bad. It's obviously better than anything this chassis had before because it had no ventilation, no active ventilation in terms of like fans moving air inside of it. The only fans in here were the GPU fans and the CPU fan which takes heat and pushes it away from the part, but then convection does the rest, which is non-assisted. This is assisted, it's gonna be better no matter what. So you're gonna have fans here, fans here, and it's just gonna whoosh, do the top. Uh, oh, wait, it's fine. Stop trying to help me, I gotta think in my own brain. <laughs> yeah, it like poofed in my face. All right, well that lines up. <laughs> it looks like, look, it looks like a face with the eyes and then the mouth going, oh. It's gonna be cool. Literally, because it got a radiator now. <laughs> I think those two marks are good. I don't want to overdo it. Um, I'll, there's still gonna be a lot of detail showing in painting, which we're now preparing for now, which is the part I am most excited for. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna use that trusty painting rack I made. Bye-bye, Fractal logo. So I'm gonna be trying out Vinyl and fabric paint. I don't know, have any idea how this is gonna work, mostly because it's the only gray color we could find that doesn't have a metallic in it. This is our undercoat though. This is stainless steel. We imagine this is the color the parts would be. Um, this is what we're gonna be doing, some chipping effects and some weathering effects down to this color. 
So this will be underneath this color and this is what we'll show. If you've seen kind of like the starter jump ship in Destiny 2, that's sort of the effect we're going for, although that one was a green color. It's not my build, but I really didn't want to do green. I didn't want to commit him to a color that may clash in his space. I have no idea where it's going. I have no idea what his setup is like. So that's why we're just going with this. So now what I'm going to do is a nice, maybe two thin coats of this color. See how it looks and go from there. Oh, that's a nice color. Ooh, that, that catches the light. Really nice. Dude, I'm going to remember this paint. Look how even that is. And I did one coat and look how even those metallics are. And you were are. intentionally speeding through it because Dude, of stress. Dude, Seymour 316 stainless steel, the inventor of aerosol spray paint. Wait, so they invented spray paint? I, I, <laughs> seems like who I should have gone with to begin with, right? Anyone that has done any sort of model making knows what I'm about to do with this Frizzies hairspray. You can actually spray paint using hairspray. So where you want to chip, you put some hairspray and stuff. And what this will do is that you let it dry so it hardens, just like it would in your hair. What this will do now is it will create a barrier between this paint and the next paint I'm gonna put on. So that after it dries, the next layer, I then take just regular water, which I have in a spray bottle, spray water on it, let it kind of soak, and then take a toothbrush, a sponger, toothpick, whatever, and you can start chipping off the paint because it can't adhere. But you can eventually chip off all of it if you wanted. What'll happen is you need to seal it when you're done with some sort of a, uh, a clear coat, which I do have a matte clear for this. And I'm thinking around here, we'll chip on that obviously. Corners, I think corners make the most sense, right? All I have to do is chip through. Like I've got to poke a hole basically. What I'm doing is I'm loosening it up in areas that I want it to chip. See how it's dry Dude, there and it's not doing the same thing? That looks like exactly like the freaking surface of the... I know, that's why when you showed me a picture of it, I was like, oh, I can do that. Oh, that's so sick. I mean, I don't think a lot of people know this about me. I'm an enthusiast painter, detailer like this. And I've never in the seven years that I've been doing this channel shared this with anybody. Maybe it's time. Oh, you're opening up. It's a... <laughs> so the idea is that the corner here because it's a leading edge, right? Now watch here, you ready? This corner. That's because of the hairspray. Oh, that's so freaking cool. <laughs> now this will continue to chip until you seal it with like clear coat and stuff. So what I'm gonna be doing next is I'm gonna do all the chipping where I want it. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clear it, clear it all with a matte clear. Then I can start doing detail with the airbrush. Not bad for a few hours on a Friday morning so far. So it's turning out really good. I'm really happy with how these gouges turned out. They're actually smooth, they're not gonna cut you. So because we still have the possibility of chipping, we don't want that to be the case. So what we're gonna do now, we, well, it is the case. What we're gonna do now is we are going to seal this. So I've got clear coat. This is a satin crystal clear. So it's not, per, it's not matte, it's satin, which will give it enough of a, like, a reflection a little bit but um, it's gonna seal this all in. And we've still got more to do on top of it. So I'm using this as a sealer. We're basically building a sh like a paint shell on this so that we don't accidentally chip off more. If painting on top of the hairspray means chipping, won't the clear coat just chip? Yes, which is why we need it to all touch. That's why it's called sealing. So we just got some really good news. Uh, Micro Center, who you guys know are uh, sponsors of ours just randomly were like, you guys doing anything right now? You got any projects you're working on? And I was like, as a matter of fact, we do. Instead of getting a 7,700K now, he's gonna get a 9,900K. Which coincidentally is packaged in a Destiny end room. The reason why I'm doing this for him, he is a special ed teacher. He works with special ed and needy kids. My dad did that for years after he was retired and that is not an easy gig. So I figured why not spoil someone who literally is taking care of other people's uh, kids during the day uh, and trying to give them, you know, an education and uh, a quality of life. So why not give him a quality of gaming? We made it look really weathered right here because our idea is that this was taking a beating as like space debris and whatever is coming into it. I'm gonna do some black soot and stuff on this to make it look like this is some sort of an exhaust. Phil was like, you have a giant roller toolbox dedicated to nothing but your model building tools. And I was like, of course, who doesn't? All 
All right, so as you can see, we've got the exhaust effect here, like I mentioned. This is just the black airbrush spray paint. Um, you can see the top too. I made it look like this is also an exhaust vent. And this is just the same technique that I use with the model boats. I mean, it's just black and then you fade it and you get a real dark and real kind of carbon looking. And so it actually looks like exhaust. You have to imagine over time, they probably would have cleaned this and scrubbed it and stuff, which would have left grooves and such. Not only that, soot isn't perfectly uniform as it goes up. So I'm sort of paint, I'm putting paint on a rag and then I'm just sort of brushing lines into it. And then I'll just do this a, a while till I, I get the effect that I like. And I'll go way up with it. See, look. Okay, so as I said, Micro Center asked if we were working on any new projects and we immediately thought of this build. And I thought instead of doing a 7700K, I already explained all that, maybe they'd be willing to set us up with some hardware for him. So this is, this is what we've got. No longer are we going with that 7700K, we are going with the 9900K. And yes, there are lots of options, especially for um, enthusiast grade stuff. The problem is ITX options are definitely limited. So because this is a gaming machine and we want to max out games, we are going with the high core clock of the 9900K. I kind of feel like um, there's other options that you could use if you wanted to do an AMD based system, if you were kind of following along with this sort of a deal. So we'll put, I'll put a link to an alternative motherboard and processor for AMD fans to uh, kind of get something that's comparable to this. So we also needed for him a motherboard and that is once again, for like the third time, the trusty ROG Strix Z390i Gaming. So we're going with 16 gigabytes of Dominator Platinum RGB using the new Capellix LEDs. They're extremely bright and IQ, uh, although needs polishing. But the amount of features that IQ has in terms of making the lights be blinky, we think will definitely fit the theme of this being a spaceship inspired build. And then we ended up going with the Intel SSD6, um, which is an NVMe drive. It's a two terabyte, not the fastest on the market, but definitely the best value. And then we decided to go ahead and unbottleneck his gaming experience by upgrading his panel. He's using an old full HD DVI 60 hertz, nothing special gaming panel, or well, panel that now we're using the AOC AG241QX, which is a 24 inch LED FreeSync G-Sync compatible 144 hertz, one millisecond. 1440p. Huge thank you to Micro Center for sharing all of that with us. And now we've got to go finish the case mod, put it all together and get it all installed and tested and benchmarked before he comes and picks it up in 24 hours. So Phil, uh, over the weekend, got these stencils made from the Warlock logo thingy. I like how I'm building a computer for a thing I don't know anything about. Yeah, and I just started playing like a month ago, basically. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna just kind of do a light clear on this. Then we're gonna do the hairspray, and then we're gonna spray the logo, and then we're gonna chip the logo and make it match the weathering that's on the rest of the rest of the case. Water just sort of gets in there and gets it started, and then I dab it off with a paper towel and give it a little wipe. I love how there's like so many different colors and textures going on now. All I'm trying to do right now is kind of clean up in between and then make the paint look like it ran just a little bit. So fan girls? Fan girl? Fan girls. Fan girls. <laughs> fan girls. No, fan everywhere. girls? You're painting all your fan girls? Everywhere. And now what I'm doing is I'm dry brushing that black into the grooves so the grooves are getting dark. But see how it's putting it like the black inside the holes and the holes are getting darker? It passes the five foot rule, that's for sure. Too bad it's the wrong logo. So we were doing a test fit right now with the Kraken X52 that we got for this. <laughs> <laughs> I would really have to open up that hole more to make it fit. And I really don't want to do that. I know that sounds like a lazy cop-out thing. I feel bad because Micro Center, you know, paid for this, but um, I don't want to make that hole that much bigger because I had to really sand down these edges to keep them from being too sharp. Like right now you can touch them and not cut yourself. And with how thin this metal is, that wasn't easy to do. So we're going to use this on a different build at some point. Um, put this in our inventory real quick. And Sorry, Micro Center. Um, you guys are still MVP though. So. That's on us. Uh, yeah, we're done. You made a very good point. Phil was like, is it gonna fit? I'm like, oh crap. 
And the answer was no. Now I know a lot of you guys are like, just make the hole bigger, but I just said, well, I don't want to do that. I mean, I would almost have the whole entire grill removed then at that point. But I still have these guys, which now just makes those look like black fans, but whatever, I can still scrape them up and stuff. But these are also gonna be chipped and weathered. These are the exact same paint as the base coat on that, but with the same undercoat. So I'm gonna chip and weather these now. install your Corsair fans. First, you punch a hole through your computer. <laughs> so we made fake wires to represent the fan wires that I went through trouble of hiding. But it's because it's a much smaller, neater hole with a much nicer looking cable than um, the fan wires. See, why would you put your parts inside the computer? What a stupid idea. This is so much cooler. The origin of the entire idea of this build literally stemmed from me telling him, hey, I could just externally mount your radiator and then we can get better cooling for your computer. I literally said, just tape the radiator and then this, all this happened. We switched over to the good mic, cause that means, and camera too, because that means today is delivery day. So what we, you know, when you put the two halves together, what you're gonna notice is there are some effects that don't carry over into neighboring panels. Like this is the idea of being an exhaust vent. So soot would be coming up over here. So you got too much of a harsh line. I don't care for the black cages on the fan, so I'm gonna be putting some, um, this is just called dark gray, so original. But I think it's gonna blend in nicely and just by dusting it, it's gonna take away some of the super clean look of the fans, which in this case, I guess would be engines. And then I, you can see I weathered the base, but the base does not match up with the system because the system has a lot of black kind of added to it where this is just the chip paint and it still has too clean of a look. So I've gotta play around with that. And then we can uh, start assembling the system. One thing that we also did that we didn't even talk about yet, and Phil loves the fact that these are two different colors right here. I just put these here to kind of hold down the grills for these wires. These wires right here, although they look like the fan wires that we ran through, are completely fake. They go to nothing. I cut these off of power supply and it's just like, it needs something else here. So I went through the trouble of hiding these wires just to add fake ones. But it's much cleaner looking than if I drilled a hole for the fan cables, cause to put the actual fan header through um, would have been too big of a hole and I'm too lazy to deep pin it. It was much easier to just, um, as Phil calls it, um, kit bashing, where you just take things from other things and put it together. The tubing has got a lot of paint on it. But the idea is that this is supposed to look like this has been exposed to the space elements. So the shiny paracord wasn't gonna work. So this has a lot of layers of different color, um, base coat, primer, black, um, just to give it a very ununiformed look. And I think it looks very much like a rubber tube would probably look if it were exposed to space. Although I don't think we expose rubber to space, but that's besides the point. That's the touch we were missing right there. So underneath this blanket, quite honestly, I think is the coolest computer I've ever built. And it's not even mine. Anyway, you guys wanna see it? You wanna see it? No. You can't see it before the owner sees it. So the problem here, and this is Mark, by the way. Mark, say hi to YouTube. Hi. The issue, the issue with your Node 202 was the fact that you had um, that cryo rig cooler that you had to like smack it yeah, to make the fan keep going. Because you realized one day we were playing Battlefield 5, his frame rate went to crap, and he realized his fan stopped working on his air-cooled CPU, and so it was causing you to drop like 99% of your frames. Yeah. So I said, well, that's fine. We'll just cut a hole in your case and strap an AIO to it. And you're like, okay, that's fine. So I think we went a little bit farther, like just a little bit past that. Oh, as long as it doesn't catch fire. I was, I was at that. No promises. 
All right, are you, are you ready? Close, close your eyes. Close your eyes. All right, open them up. Can I touch it? <laughs> no, don't touch it! What's wrong with you? No, go ahead and touch it. I don't even know all that? That's really cool. So, if you look at your screen, oh, we took inspiration from the Wonder Wing. I've never had anything water cooled before, so this is my first water cooled. <laughs> Sorry. But I've always wanted to do like a, a themed case mod of some sort, so I kind of went all out on this. And I see my CPU, it won't die. Your CPU and stuff are here. Wait, what? So, Micro Center was like, are you guys working on anything? We were like, actually. Ooh. So you now have a 9900K, 16 gigs of DDR4, a Z390i motherboard, the same one he has, and a 2080 Super. But no, not to embarrass you or anything. I just, I, I did, I did explain that um, you work with uh, special need kids. Yeah. And that's a tough job. Cause my dad did that. It, it, I, we've we've had conversations about that. Yeah, yeah. And so it's one of those things where I thought, why don't we just go like over the top? You're a newlywed. Yeah, you know, you got yes. a lot changing. Yes. Building something like this for yourself would probably have not been uh, anytime soon. So I figured, <laughs> why don't we just go ahead and do something nice for you, who takes care of everyone else's kids who needs it, and do something nice for you. So I thank you guys. I wasn't expecting any kind of. You were just expecting, expecting an AIO strapped and, to the and outside. And no of overheating it. anymore. But wow. Oh, speaking of cooling, are you ready for this? Your graphics card is overclocked, and its max temperature is 60 C. Your CPU is overclocked to five gigahertz. Okay and it's reaching about 86C under stress test. Wow. You also have a two terabyte NVMe SSD in there. <laughs> well, the thing about my build was a budget build of your budget build well, from exactly. a couple years ago. And, and the funny part is, Phil said you guys built all of that by having going down to Micro Center and picking out the, like, what's the cheapest of every component? Well, the motherboard, I think, was it was used. Yeah. Like, it was an H110, and I was like, what is this? Did he tell you it was one where the pin was bent? Yes. <laughs> we bent it back, yep. and it worked. It worked. Well, you don't you don't have any of that to worry about anymore. So, thank. You. I hope you I hope you like the theme. I I, told, I, I love it. I yeah. told Phil. I said I hope he doesn't mind that I'm like really just sort of war tear, you know, tearing this thing no, up. No, like it it's looks been like, it's like I can touch it. So it, it looks the, really. The techniques cool. and stuff I did on the painting, you you can see it all in the video. But this, I basically took everything I know about like my model building. It looks and just so good. Threw it into a computer. But you can see the inspiration of uh, Destiny. 2. Yeah, yeah, I like. Yeah, you played with me the other day. I don't know. I guess yeah. too, sorry. I play I maybe a little too much. Can I, that's my <laughs> wife, but uh, but yeah, it's it's amazing. I love it. So now, when you go to land parties and stuff, you're gonna kind of be like we do. That's why we do the smaller PCs because we can uh, carry it around. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a. I'm a bit jealous of this computer because it turned out so good. I'm like, I gotta it, do something yeah. like this now. It's yeah. It's so yeah. It looks definitely. Looks I told Phil your biggest problem is gonna be deciding what side you want to look at. It looks really cool. We even did we even did pre pre weathering of the power button as if you were pushing it a bunch. So, but yeah, it's um, no, you didn't weather top for the oh, smack in it. Or <laughs> <laughs> So I mean that's, that's I, I had a lot it. of fun doing this. We we sp I spent about three days, about three solid days of build time on it, and which is funny because it's probably one of the fastest builds I've done in this channel. Really? Oh yeah. And I think it's one of the coolest looking ones. Personally. It's thank you. Yeah, I love it. I can't can't wait to play. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're gonna go ahead and get on out of here. Thanks for watching this video. This is the first time you guys have seen something this custom from me, and it's all in one video, and it didn't take a year, and it didn't involve a celebrity. I'd much rather build something like this for a, a guy like you than any celebrity, so. Th well, thank, thank you. I will get, it will get good use. See what happens when you come help me put up walls and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys need more help, man, so. <laughs> oh, now that you've said that, you can, you can start by packing my other studio. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you.
We'll see you in the next one. Oh yeah, um, just like Apple, but there's more. Oh wait, what did they say? But one more, one more thing. One of the one of the worst things you could possibly do is take all of this hardware and hook it up to a monitor. So here is a 144 hertz, um, 1440p LED one millisecond FreeSync panel that is G-Sync compatible. So that'll for I get to. I mean, so you don't want it. no, no, no. I didn't say that. <laughs> Yeah, he picked it as AOC, again, Micro Center, um, toss this our way. Well, and I'm not used to um, DisplayPort. <laughs> I'm still on TVI. So, thank you guys. You are welcome. So yeah, now we can go. I, I, okay, if you wanna know why we gave him this too, though, go watch my video about bottlenecking your system with the wrong monitor. <laughs>